Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are in Kimswick, Missouri, exploring an 1850s log cabin. Let's take a quick look around outside, and then let's explore what life would have been like here in rural Missouri. This area has been inhabited for at least 12,000 years, as archaeological evidence suggests that the earlier Clovis culture hunted mastodons in these lands. Fast forwarding to 1859, the town of Kimswick was founded by Theodore Kim, a dry goods merchant from St. Louis. He planned for the town to follow a grid of streets and alleyways and even developed houses to make the area more appealing to tradesmen. Within 10 years, the town was bustling with a brewery, flour mill, several shops, and trade services. The town went into decline as the highways were built and steamboats fell out of fashion. Since the 1970s, Kimswick has been on the up and up with new shops and restaurants moving in to historic buildings. Walking into the cabin, this is just absolutely incredible. So originally this house was built around the 1850s up in Mappaville, Missouri, and it was imported to this spot as an extant building. All of the logs and stones were disassembled, numbered, and then reassembled here at the spot. So pretty much everything you're seeing here is completely original to the house. If we look down, we can see the original oak floors. If we look up, we can see all of the original timbers as well as the original fireplace. And we can imagine that meals would have been cooked here as this house would not have had a kitchen indoors. It could have had a summer kitchen at its original location, but we don't have that here today. Now in this space, we can imagine that entertaining might have happened as we can see a couple of politicians having a game of checkers. Walking over to this side of the room, there are stairs, and this would have led to a boys' room and a girls' room. However, we are not going to see those today. We are instead going to see the rest of the house. So on this wall over here is a picture of the Howe family, and we can see that the house, before it was moved here, was originally covered in siding and had a large front porch, but this was restored to its original aesthetic. Now, continuing on through this house, we come through a doorway, and let's pause to notice the simpler construction methods used here. Now entering the primary bedroom, this is where the parents of the house would have slept. So let's take a moment to look around. The rope bed gives us great insight into the day-to-day -day lives of the early settlers of this house, as we can see ropes acting in place of box springs. Every night before going to sleep, the owner would have tightened both beds using this tool. The trundle bed would have been slept on by the youngest child and packed with straw. This made it really easy to clean if the child would have had an accident in the middle of the night. Also in this bedroom, we get a better sense of early life in America as we have a dresser. Now in this dresser, you would have pressed your clothes and laid them flat on the shelves and then placed rocks in them to keep them from blowing away. Whenever you left the house, you wouldn't be able to keep critters out of them. So to do that, you would latch the door shut and this would keep any mice or rodents from crawling around on your nice clothes. Now you might've worn your nice clothes when courting. So this is called a courting candle and we can see how it raises and lowers. The candles symbolize the amount of time that a gentleman could spend courting the owner of this house's daughter. So if the candle was raised up high, that meant that dad liked him and he could stay for a long time, maybe even for dinner. And if the candle was really short, it meant just stop by and say hi and then get out of here. Now crossing back through the living room, we are going to make our way over to the kitchen, which was added on at a later period. So come on through here, and this is going to give us a better sense of what life would have been like in those early days. So we can see a butter churn, and we'll see how that's demonstrated as well. And behind the butter churn, is a coffee grinder, and this is how you would have made coffee. So let's watch another demonstration to see how this plays out. Every farm family that I knew of had one of these. You, this open, you put your, your uh, roast coffee beans in here, and then you would grind them, and this drawer would be full, and then you would put this in your coffee pot.
Exiting to the yard from the door in the kitchen, we will now head over to the smaller cabin to see an outstanding example of an even simpler life. Walking inside the little cabin, come on in here and take a look at this because this is really fascinating. There are some details in here that are just reminiscent of the old kind of frontier life. So let's begin to look around. Of course, directly behind me is a large lofted space. And this would not have been the original bed that was up here, but that is where the children would have slept. And then the parents would have slept down here on the bottom floor. Now, the ladder to go up to the lofted space is really interesting because of the duct tailing. So come take a look at this finer detail as we can see that the wood has been inlaid inside of the support wood for the ladder. Over in this corner of the cabin is a wood burning stove. And you'll notice some really interesting details here as the chimney does not extend all the way to the floor, but is instead supported by these wooden brackets. And this helps to free up more floor space because this is a pretty confined room. And over here is a cherry pitter. So we can imagine the original inhabitants of this home sitting down and pitting cherries and preparing their food here. Now up here on the wall above the window, we can see two different saws. The first one would have been used for chopping lumber or for gathering firewood. And the second one is an ice saw. So originally, whenever the river would freeze in the winter time, the inhabitants of this home would go out to the river and cut out large blocks of ice and store them in a house that was just up the street. And the ice was said to have lasted all the way up until July, which was just incredible that it could survive so long in the hot and humid Missouri temperatures. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I would also like to take a moment to say a special thank you to the volunteers who helped to really bring this place to life. There's going to be a special event here on May 14th, and I'll put more information about that down in the video description below. They will be doing appraisals for a very modest cost. So you can bring your antiques, your art, jewelry, other collectibles down here. And every dollar that's raised is going to go to the local historical society. Additionally, I'd like to take a moment to say a special thank you to our members whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on this screen, please sign up for our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.